water. It's in the bottles we drink. It's in the air that we breathe. But most importantly, water covers more than 70% of the entire planet. The Philippines itself is a bunch of land masses crunched up together and it's all surrounded by water. But when we're talking about water, why are we talking about water? Because it can kill you! Okay, maybe not exactly. But water is a dangerous thing, especially when it's handled by the forces of nature. Things like typhoon, floods, and tsunamis, they can all destroy cities and destroy lives. As such, it is our duty to inform you of the things that could kill you and the things that might danger you. Hi guys, I'm Q and today I'm gonna talk about flush floods, how it works, how it affects you, and what to do when it strikes. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, uh, I'm Miles. Focus our attention on the three barangays, which are the focus of today's discussion. Barangay Manikan, Sangali, and Bona. Thanks to the Google Satellite up there, we are able to get a good picture of these barangays from way up above. We can see these three spots lie right along the coastline of Zambanga City. These three barangays follow along the, say it with me now, the Maria Clara Lorenzo Lobregat Highway, or the MCLL Highway for short, which functions as the life and blood of the Mindanao Expressway. Now, when we're talking about barangays, we are talking about settlements with families living in homes and the establishments needed for communities to thrive in. Sadly, these places are the ones really affected by the Philippines' natural hazards. For these three barangays, we've come to the point that flash floods are a potential hazard to the area. Basically, floods happen in areas by the coast, and the problem arises way too often. It also depends on conditions in the area, such as climate or other factors, for example, which will help us determine the likelihood a flood will happen and its intensity level. Let's take a look at storm surges first. You see, storm surges are the rise of sea levels due to very strong winds. These winds blow water over water. Think of it as wind stacking up water over water and pushing it down to the shoreline. Rising sea levels can also end up flooding coastal areas. Take note that the sea level hasn't always stayed the same. It pretty much changes and shifts in respect to the tide. But it's also influenced by climate change and storm surges. So it affects communities in these areas and the people who rely on the resources that's going Coastal barangays experience the effects of these events and sometimes it can get really catastrophic. Sangali is no stranger to flash flooding, however. The barangay has actually gone through a flooding incident way back in 2014. Not only that, but Bolong and Manikan have also experienced flooding in the months of April and May respectively in the year of 2012. So, what's at play during these types of disasters? What exactly are the physics behind the power of the flash flooding? Tom Christensen, a professor, freaking genius, summed up what happened when you see cars and other stuff floating in live TV. Water has two effects and everything is back. Lifting and pushing. According to Tom, two feet of water is just enough to make an object weighing at a staggering 3,000 pounds float. But how? Really, it's just the momentum of the water mustering up all the force and all the strength needed to float a very, very, very heavy object. Think about it this way. A small, gentle stream by the canal has the power of exerting a force of 500 pounds against the side of a car, while the force of a rushing flash flood can reach more than a thousand pounds. That's kind of strong for a bunch of H2Os. This is called hydrodynamics. It's a scientist study of liquids in motion. It's about how water flows, how fast, and the way it goes. If that didn't make sense, let me make it simple for you. How water moves. The application ranges from determining the flow rate in pipelines, measuring the flow of liquid metals, and most important of them all, wave dynamics. Or how waves interact with objects. But you don't need mass in the A really strong wave can knock you off your feet. So, we've talked about floods, how dangerous they are, 
and the science behind it all. But we still haven't discussed what to do when the real thing strikes, so what should we do? Remember, preparation is key. You just don't take the next college entrance test without prepping. Don't be stupid. Before water tries to kill you, prep up an emergency kit that works for you and later a family communication plan so you can stay connected with your family members and your Joa. You might want to keep your homes waterproof. You could start off by putting up barriers to keep flood water from pouring in and move important stuff to higher ground. During a flood, turn that radio or TV on to keep updated with what's what. You could also probably use Facebook or Twitter, assuming all the flood water hasn't messed up your internet connection. While staying vigilant, make sure to check everything electrical within the house. Unplug all electrical appliances and turn off all main switches. And don't casually go on electrical poles unless it's for desperate times. If you could see families and people struggling to find shelter, offer your homes to them as temporary place to stay safe. When the floods start to subside slowly, use extreme caution when entering buildings. Flood waters can erode buildings, roadways, and scatter flood debris, so always watch out. If it wasn't obvious by now, we're all Filipinos, so that means we have to keep the Bayanihan spirit alive. Lend a hand to a brother or sister if they need one, and prioritize lives over material things. This video, we talk about how floods affect the barangay Sangali, Bolong, and Manikan, how floods work, and what to do when it strikes. This was Flash Physics.